In 2020, nuclear power was the largest source of zero carbon energy, beating hydro, solar, and wind. While the U.S. is retiring more plants than it builds, one country is aggressively investing in nuclear power, and that country is China. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host Sean Kenny. And before we get started, I want to ask you to hit the like button and drop a comment below. And let's just talk, guys. Seriously, tell me what you think about the subject or anything else you want. Let's just get a good conversation going. Let's forget about the algorithm. I'm here to have a good time. Now, before I get into it, I want to preface that in most of my videos, I tend to discuss a problem, specifically one that pertains to regulatory policy as it relates to nuclear power in the United States. I go on a bit of a rant, and then I discuss some common sense solutions to said problem. This is not going to be one of those episodes. That's because I'm not going to talk about what the U.S. is doing wrong. Instead, I'm going to talk about what China is doing right in this space, why they're doing it, and I'm probably going to end it there because... When I started to look at the numbers, I could not believe what I was seeing. The Chinese government is building out nuclear power plants on a scale I didn't even think was possible. Like, if someone were to tell me that a Chinese nuclear plant went online at the time when we stopped filming today's episode, that will be the least crazy thing I hear this week. I know I cast quite a bit of shade towards the Chinese Communist Party, whether it's how they run their government, their authoritarian nature, the mass censorship, both at home and abroad, or just the fact that they spent three decades working towards a complete takeover of the critical resources that drive the global economy. The one thing I can't fault them on is the motivation they possess to go full speed on nuclear power. The fact is that in a country that needs to provide electricity for 1.4 billion people, two thirds of that electricity comes from burning coal. China may be the number one manufacturing powerhouse on this planet, but they are also the number one polluter. It got so bad that they decided to take a radical approach to roll out nuclear power on an industrial scale. And even with some delays and rollbacks on construction, they've actually done a pretty good job. As of the recording of this episode, China has over 50 reactors operating at full power with an installed capacity of 47.5 gigawatts. That may only contribute to less than 5% of China's total electricity demand, but to put things into perspective, China is a big country, and that number represents more than 50% of the installed nuclear capacity in the United States. If that doesn't sound nuts, then get this. The bulk majority of those reactors were built in the last decade. They aren't done either because there are about a dozen reactors under construction in mainland China right now, with about another three dozen being planned over the next decade. Keep in mind, these are mostly pressurized water reactors like the Halong One reactor at the Fuking Nuclear Station, which entered commercial service less than six weeks ago. I haven't even gotten into the advanced stuff, but I'll get there. The Chinese government have plans to have up to 200 gigawatts of installed capacity by the year 2035 and around 1400 gigawatts by the year 2100. They're gonna get pretty close to those numbers if they keep it up. Bloomberg reported last year that the Chinese hope to consistently build between six to eight reactors on an annual basis. However, one concern many have is what to do with the waste. China is evaluating the construction of a high level waste repository in the Gobi Desert starting around 2041. In addition, the Chinese have several advanced Gen 4 nuclear designs in development, which can produce less waste. These include the CFR 600, which is a sodium-cooled fast reactor that can produce 600 megawatts of electricity. Two are currently under construction, with grid connection expected as early as 2023. A 1,000 megawatt version is also under consideration. If approved, construction could start as early as 2028, with completion expected in 2034. The Chinese are also planning to develop various high temperature gas cool designs, which can run on triso fuel pebbles, in addition to various solid and liquid fueled thorium reactor designs. No word on commercial development as of yet, but at this time, the Chinese seem pretty focused on the fast spectrum designs. So a great deal of progress has been made with more efforts being projected to occur in the coming decades. Now, on the one hand, it's discouraging because while China has rolled out nuclear reactors in spectacular fashion, the motivation behind it is scary. As I mentioned before, China is the largest polluter on this planet. Several studies have showed that as many as 30 million Chinese have died between the year 2000 and 2016 due to breathing polluted air. Some cities are so bad that you can't even tell what time of day it is. 
So environmental disasters is one reason why China has been willing to go all out. A lot of this progress can also be attributed to the fact that most of China's political aristocracy are scientifically educated, with a considerable number of them holding PhDs. And with a unified, highly educated one-party system and a centrally planned economy, that doesn't concern itself with things like private property rights or NIMBY attitudes towards building near population centers, you can get a lot done. Money also doesn't seem to be much of a concern, seeing as the Chinese government has taken no issue with subsidizing the major utilities to encourage the development and rollout of advanced nuclear power. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for this. More nuclear power on the grid in any country is a good thing, and China really needs it bad. This isn't all they're doing. A considerable amount of resources have been dedicated to pushing towards renewables as well. However, they have only been able to do this because air pollution concerns have been at crisis levels for several decades. I guess I'm discouraged by the fact that these things only see serious government support when things get this bad. And unless you're China, you tend to be wrapped up in bureaucracy, red tape, and regulatory dystopia. I can't see a country like the United States doing what China did and on this scale in the time that it needs to happen because we are a free country. We democratically elect our officials and in many cases we don't agree. Thankfully, we are not anywhere near the level of decay that China is to justify a call to action of this magnitude. But even if we were, I don't think the US government should exercise any level of authority to do what China did at these speeds nor should they. As much as I want to see the mass adoption of nuclear power, I don't think it should come at the cost of personal freedoms, like the disregard of private property rights through eminent domain and mass public spending. Have there been other examples of less authoritarian governments that push an initiative at this scale? Not exactly, but one does come to mind. France had an issue in the early 70s. During the oil embargoes, most of the country's electricity came from the burning of imported oil. They had no fossil fuel reserves to speak of to be self-sustaining. They didn't want to be dependent on imported gas from Russia or Northern Europe, so they worked towards nuclear power. Over the next three decades, France started training to develop the best nuclear engineers. They settled on a common design for the light water reactors, and they just rolled them out. By the year 2000, they had achieved their goal. Today, more than three quarters of France's electricity comes from nuclear power. They have the cleanest air quality in Europe, their carbon emissions per capita is less than Germany, which is ironic given the fact that Germany has been shutting down their reactors in favor of solar and wind. If that wasn't enough, all the nuclear waste they produce is reprocessed for continued use. It took a long time, but eventually France did what they had to to get it done. Now, I'm not advocating to do exactly what France did, nor am I saying that we need to roll out light water reactors the way China has, but we can roll out nuclear power quickly. Dozens of companies have developed designs for advanced walkway safe reactors. The science behind it has been proven and is well understood. These companies aren't asking for subsidies, handouts, or federal R&D funding, although that would be nice, it's not necessary. Not six or eight reactors a year, but hundreds if not thousands of reactors from multiple mass production facilities. It can be done, unsubsidized, cheaply, and in a matter that allows for all nations to directly benefit from. For now, I want to say to the Chinese people, keep up the good work in rolling these plants out. I wish for nothing more than clean skies in your future. To the rest of my audience, I'm Sean Kenny, and this was Rock Logic.